So if you be my bodyguard, I can be your long lost pal. Well, I can call you Betty, and Betty, you can call me, you can call me Al. Call me Al. This is Call Me Al with Al I Oh, yeah. What's up? We are back. The Call Me Al show. And it's sweltering out. It's 101 degrees on Long Island. The only thing that can get me off the beach and in the studio. Six o'clock Eastern time is the Call Me Al show. It's What's not up, a podcast. Aaron? What's going on, man? Now, unless we, you, you called me, you said you had the greatest idea ever. It's like, we're not a podcast. I mean, we are. We can be found wherever podcasts are heard, but we are the Call Me Al show. Yeah, every, like everyone, you know, people call in. I think it's more of a show. You know what yeah. I mean? I haven't seen I haven't seen a podcast where people call in. It's like, there's, you know, it's like a radio show, kind of. More of a show. We're putting it on is. a show. We're very thankful for the people that call in. Very exciting show today. Tanner Bozer, his tweet went somewhat viral this weekend after Cyril Gans fight. He said that his cousin, his cousin gave him some advice after he lost to Cyril Gans, and he was wondering if Francis Ngannou wanted that advice. So, I thought that was hysterical. Oh, everyone was clamoring for third cousin Sean and uh, Tanner, of course, reached out to him on our behalf. And, uh, but hey, alas, it was not going to be. Well, we'll talk about, we'll talk that, talk that over with Tanner, but I still, I'm wondering about, I'm wondering about this third cousin. (laughs) I'm wondering if this is a real guy or whether he just kind of made this up because it sounds too good to be true, but it almost sounds it almost sounds too good to be like it's something you can't make up. Like your third cousin Sean text messaged you on Facebook and told you what to do in your fight. And you get these people, they do that. They te- and a cult. The guy last week. Oh yeah. A little pip a little pip that he's actually a big pip squeak. <laughs> Supposedly, he tells me he's a heavyweight. He's like, I'll knock you out, I'm a heavyweight. Supposedly. But he give me he's he texts me advice what I should have done about against Cowboy Cerrone. Oh my gosh! And I'm like, all these everybody when 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 you fight and then you lose, you want to hear from your teammates, your coach, people that are, you know, they can get, they they have, you know, some experience and they can give you advice. But for someone that's never He's a, uh, this third cousin, Sean, is a mechanic. <laughs> now, you don't think that Tanner Bozer's coach didn't give him the same advice and it was a little bit easier for Tanner Bozer to take coming from his coach? I don't know. Third cousin, if I had a third cousin, Sean, and he tried to tell me what to do in, in a loss, I wonder how, how long after it was. How how out of his mind is this third cousin Sean? Because imagine it was like the next day. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I'm thinking a situation where Tanner probably didn't even make it back to the to the locker room, and you know, cousin third cousin Sean had to immediately invoke his knowledge on 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 Tanner. So yeah, he's like texting his uh, he's like texting his his wife or girlfriend. I'm okay, and then Sean <laughs> FaceTimes in. You should have done the and the leg chops. That was the oh, best. Can I bring that up, please? Oh, we're gonna go here. Is boom. Look at this. Look at this golden tweet here. Can you read it? It's a little small for me, but he goes. Here's um. I I think I can read. It says uh. Well, you know what? I can pull it up on my uh. Let me pull it up on my text, and I can read it all word for word. He goes that Latifi fight frustrated me when you desperately needed to win that last round, but instead try to tie him up, giving your corner thumbs up. He's a big boy. Get off you, but you didn't even try. 
This is Cousin Sean's advice. OSP, a big weight difference, but you hustled up with urgency. Same with the leg chops. Those are a part of your striking that keeps the guys thinking where it will come from next. Only boxing gone just makes things even easier to see for his one mile reach. See, I can't resist my two cents. That's why I'll probably pass. Uh, and stay on this side of the fence. Good luck. This is him passing on an opportunity to come on the Call Me Al show. And then he says, uh, immediately, Tanner says, I immediately regret asking you anything. Huge mistake on my part here. I will tell him you politely declined. This is so hard to get through and not laugh the entire time. It's incredible. It's gold. He's got to be it's real. Gold. I mean, I got to believe. And then... Another, so we had, we have, I'm excited to have this guy on. He, he's already in the comments. CJ Betancourt, an aspiring up and coming superstar has put out the challenge through Instagram. He said he wants to come on the show and tell me how it is. Mm. He's friends with Colt and he's got a... I don't know if he's got a record. I don't know what he's got, but he reached out to me. He's, he wants to come on the show. He wants to tell me. He wants to show me. So I think we have. Uh, let's pull up. Let's. We'll, if CJ's in, he's in here. CJ, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring him in now. I think he's pretty technologically apt here. So let's CJ, bring, uh, I'm about to bring you bring in. CJ, you're invited. Make the most of this, young man. Here's here's a little uh, video of get, CJ fighting. Go. At first, I didn't know which one was CJ. Bro, get out! Is. Don't he's, get out of balance. Like he's in the Yo, don't get out of balance. Jason, what are you doing? The audio is absolutely hysterical. This guy is not throwing a punch. He's got an incredible opponent here. Oh, come on, Jason. Throw a punch. Come on, Jason. Jason, throw a punch. Throw a punch. He doesn't throw a single punch, and that's how the fight ends. Zero punches thrown by CJ's opponent. Incredible matchmaking. Incredible arena that these guys are fighting in. He says, CJ's show the other footage. Don't worry, CJ. Come on. Got get it. On, get, let's get this guy in I, here, ladies and gentlemen. CJ, from, I'm trying to invite you, buddy. From Winnipeg, Canada. Oh, I guess, I guess yes, the audio came through. It didn't come through for me, but he is. he was fighting a drunk guy. That doesn't know how to throw a punch. <laughs> and it, it was incredible. He said, let me on it. I, I've joined I twice now. So look at your notifications, CJ. Where are you at, buddy? Uh-oh. CJ's first problem is he doesn't know how to get on. Nope. There it is. Come on, CJ. Let's you can do this, let's buddy. Video. Let's watch this video again. Let's watch let's CJ. Watch Look at this. Okay. Where are we? Go. In the backyard in Canada. It looks like it just rained. We're in the mud. He comes out. Bro, get out. Don't get out of balance. Yo, don't get out of balance. Jason, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? That was actually one punch by the other guy. Look at this. Oh. Oh. Nice little jab right hook to the body. They must be doing just body shots, I think. Keep going, Jason. Just body shot. Oh, oh. Big come on, Jason. Up. Come on, Jason. The next UFC hey, champion, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to bring him on. CJ from nah, Winnipeg. He's an incredible good, upcoming CJ, talent. CJ, we're, we're counting on you to come on, buddy. I, I invited you. I sent him a Definitely private Definitely just body day. shots. Let's see. Oh, Prime Orc Bork says he's tech illiterate. I think he might be. I, I had faith in him because he had been in the studio earlier trying to come on. I've invited him twice. I told him to check his notifications. So even Tony Banana says the uh, app is childproof. It's tricky at first. Yes. But CJ, come on, bud. We're counting on you. 
If I got to call you, I'll call you. No, nah, we got to get this guy. See, this guy's got to get in. Okay. He's got to come on. Come on. We got to get him in. Send him one more. Tech illiterate. CJ, are you here or not? Because you're absolutely blowing it. You talked a big game. <laughs> you said you were going to come on and tell me how it is. And you can't even get on the podcast. What do I press? Oh, CJ, CJ, CJ. All bark, no bite. CJ with an S. C. Jay Betancourt, remember that name. Sports fans, this guy is on the come up. He's challenging UFC fighters from the lawn in the backyard, the mud of Canada. He said, bro, invite me again. I will invite him yet a third time. He said, when am I fighting again? I should fight CJ. <laughs> I don't know. He looks pretty tough. Oh, yeah. You know what, CJ? I'm going to have to – you've taught me a lesson. I'm going to have to pre-screen you guys and uh, get you in a little studio session ahead of time just to make sure you guys can get on. So uh, you, you've taught me a valuable lesson. I'm inviting you yet one more time. There you go. He he's on. He said, am I on? Well, I, no, you're not. I, I invited you. CJ. We're all counting on you. Notifications. The bell. Like the bell looking thing. Are, are you on a phone or are you on your computer? Uh, he said, I wonder what I'm known for. He said, how does it feel to be known as Masvidal's Ribery? Really? That's what he said. To be honest with you, it feels great. Freaking beat Masvidal. It's pretty sick. He beat drunken Jason in the backyard. <laughs> very, very close um, as far as accolades go. But he's up there. He's making his way in the world. And we're going to give him the biggest platform that he could ever have. But he can't manage to do it. He's and I'm, totally... I'm uh, about to I'm about to punch my computer. No, 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 no. We've uh, come so far. Please don't. CJ Benkorf might have to get his number and call him in. I don't know. This haps. <sighs> we're trying. We're trying here, but well, CJ, if, I, if we have to call, this this is uh this is a lesson for haps. We're dealing with people like CJ Benkorf. Maybe we're going to ask him about his uh, scholastic achievements. Maybe he graduated high school. All right. Hopefully he graduated junior high, middle school. But he should be able to figure this out at this well, point. He gave us the phone number. He's the very first call we are making on the special, special call me out phone. We have a dedicated line just for the show. And uh, we're calling him right now. Okay. So CJ. If hope we're hoping you can answer a phone, and then Al, he is all yours. Here we go. Let's bring him in, ladies and gentlemen. Come on, fighting buddy. out of Winnipeg. CJ Hello, yeah, Ben Oh, he answers the phone with a yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Ben How are we doing? On this beautiful and, Thursday uh, afternoon. Uh, feeling great. You know, coming back to the gym in August, late August. You know, uh, next week I'm back in the gym. You know, I got some good fights with KD. Uh, you know, one of the boxers in one of the rival training camps. Got another fight with Vladimir Alvarez. Next, uh, next uh, national champion or ex-national champion. So I'm doing fairly good, actually. Yeah. So you're fighting these guys? Yes, I'm fighting these guys. These fights are confirmed 100%, 110%. You know, uh, they're in the works right now. Wait, they're confirmed or they're in the works? These are two different things. 
Uh, so the one with KB is uh, confirmed. You know, we're going to make that one happen. And yeah. Who is this? What do you mean we're going to make this one happen? It's made already, I thought you said. Yes, it's made already. Like I've been saying, you know. I mean, I don't know what else you want me to say, you know. Very good, CJ. Uh, when did you get into fighting? Uh, it started, the passion started when I was, uh, in, uh, grade, uh, I was in grade nine, actually. Uh, I was getting into a lot of trouble in that, and uh, I was going to, uh, it was part of a youth program at the time in that. Yeah, I was going to a lot of youth programs, but it was really the uh, last two years of my high school career that I, that I, uh, was, uh, doing all the boxing in that. And what grade are you in now? Uh, actually, I'm a graduate, but I uh, stayed back in high school. Oh, that's a surprise! Wow. <laughs> oh, that's what, a, uh, you know, it's it's just it's just one year. It's literally just one year. You know, when I was you, in you, grade nine, I was taking grade eleven and ten courses. You know, I yeah, I admit. You know, I failed math and science. Okay, big deal. I came back. I bounced back. You know. Yeah. We need, yeah. Uh, you know what? I kind of agree. You don't need math and science, but it does say something about a person. I don't consider myself too smart, but I got through it. You know what I mean? So we're going to pull up a video. You, you know CJ. I mean, uh, CJ, you, hey, know, you, know, you know Colt. Excuse me. Yeah, I know. Uh, well, my uh, friend Demetric knows him. Yeah, that's one of the uh, amateur MMA fighters not that I know. Okay. We're gonna pull up a video here. Is I wonder if CJ's on right now. Do you think CJ's watching? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. All right. You want me to pull it up? Yeah, let's hey, pull, man, let's... Just pull up any anyone. Just pull up all of them. You know. Pull up I mean, all of them. The footage. All right. Hey man, listen. It, it, that, is... that was me during. That was me during COVID, man. That was that was me when the gyms were shut down. You know, here in Canada, the gyms uh, they shut down in twenty in twenty twenty in November. You know, that was the last time I was in the gym. All those fights were in the beginning of twenty twenty one. You know. Well, I think we're pulling I up mean, your buddy right now, and he looks yeah, is, he looks tough. This is CJ uh, CJ so versus big, Colton. Man. All right, are we ready? No, no, I never fought Colton. I never fought wait, wait, CJ wait, wait, versus wait, wait, wait. Colton right here. Oh my god. That's a nice little one too. I'll give it to you, but it doesn't look like this. Oh, you gotta watch out for that one. Sean, bro. Sean, bro. Sean, bro. Oh, well, we're pulling up up right now. You just knocked him out. It looks like. Hey, man. You know, well, I was one of the uh, ex heavyweights. He went to North Bend Boxing Club for a year, and that's so it is what it is. Yeah. I gotta be honest with you, uh, CJ. You, you're very disappointing. I thought you were gonna come on. And you, you told me that I was Masvidal's biggest. I was known as Masvidal's robbery. You're disappointing. Well, well, what do you want me to say? What do you want me to say? You ducked him. You 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 ducked him. You what, what do you want me to say? You're known as his robbery. Everyone I, in the whole MMA community goes. You know, Al Quinta, man. You know, George Masvidal got robbed when he fought him. You know, that's the whole MMA community, my guy. Your own boss, Dana White, even hated you. You know that? He even hated you. You know, you you, you, you bite the hand that fed you, my guy. You know, I would CJ, never do that to a promoter. You 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 would never do that to a promoter, huh? Absolutely no. I never, I, I live by the sword, die by the sword. That's what I was taught. You, on the other hand, you know, throwing little hissy fits on YouTube there, buddy. I don't know, man, and I thought I got an ego problem. Well, you well, definitely you... have no ego problem at all. Uh, definitely not. You hey, are uh... from the man coming from the man himself. CJ, when uh, when is this fight you got coming up? We're trying to work it out around uh, late August. We don't have a specific date, but we got the, uh, you know, we got the exact uh, guy. So. And, and I'm so disappointed that you're not visibly on the screen right now. <laughs> hey, well, I went on the app, right? It wasn't working for me. I, 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 I literally can show screenshots. I try clicking the thing. It's not showing it for me. Like, I don't know what you... What you what you want me to say? Oh, no? uh, 
yeah, I, mean, I don't know what you want me to say, man. Like I, like, uh, like use, like, like seriously, use a normal app. Use a normal fucking app. You're using half TV. You know, like, hey, man, this is coming from a guy that's like, uh, look, this is coming from a guy that's like half brown, right? I know shitty Indian apps when I see them. You know, I don't know what you want me to say. You know, so you're saying Haps is a shitty Indian app. <laughs> I mean, shit, man, it looks like one. I don't know what you want me to say. <laughs> well, if it's a shitty I mean, Indian app, seriously. and you're brown, shouldn't you figure? It, shouldn't you be able to figure it out? Don't you said you know about these things? Right? Hey, man, I'm half white too, so I mean, you know, I'm only half as good with this type of stuff, man. You feel me? So the yeah, hey, man, half Portuguese too, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm full. You're I'm like, out. I guess I would consider myself full white, and I still figured it out. So you got half a step. You're half a step ahead of me. I don't know what you're. I don't know what the excuse is. <laughs> I mean, hey man. I mean, I don't know what you want me to say. You know, I mean, look, on, I'm just saying facts right here. You know, I mean, CJ... look, you got to myself at you. Hey, listen, CJ... in the amateurs, I represent two different peoples. Right, actually, three different peoples Canadians, Portuguese, and East Indians. Right, I'm being compared to Amir Khan and Prince Nassim in the sport of boxing. You know, that's what I'm being compared to in the amateurs. You know, I've let's given pull up, my praise. Let's pull up, let's pull up Prince, yeah. okay. Prince CJ, Go. right here. Look at him, <laughs> bro. Get out, oh my God. don't get out of balance. I mean, look, you do have Yo. Some- don't That's get out of balance. Punches, but Jason, what are you doing? Who's this guy? Oh. <laughs> 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 Me out of <laughs> Look at this man! Come on! No, show, show the other footage, man. Show the other. What other footage? footage. I send you like six clips, man, of like all different types of fighters. And this is me out of. It was. Oh, it was pretty. Crazy. Crazy. It was. I got to be honest with you. What's with all the selfies you sent me? <laughs> before before Look, you cha- Before you said you were going to come on here and challenge me to. A- I'm showing I'm legit in this. You know, where where are you to talk down to me? You know, what did you do in the amateurs in the sport of boxing? You at 17, yeah, you at 18 versus me at 18, right, in an amateur boxing match with full-on training camp. Look, I'm I'm talking about my best version of myself, which was 2020 back in November. Yeah, that was my best version of myself, yeah? Mm-hmm. You know, what, 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 what would you do? What would you do, yeah? At 140, what would you do? I mean, I would come on to the Call Me Out podcast and I would ask questions. I would shut my mouth and I would listen like I did when I was 17, 18 years old. You would never hear me talking the way that you talk. I would never send. If I sold it, if I sent. What was that? Yeah. No, it was nothing. You got people in the background, I think. If I sent a, a UFC fighter a message on Instagram, it would be asking for advice. It would ask. It would be asking for uh, guidance. You know, yeah, it's a UFC fighter that fought that was ranked number six, right? For a lot of fighters to Four. just keep that uh, rank. What fighters did I duck? You got all the other fighters, man. We're talking about Conor McGregor. We're talking about all the other ones. And I, like, I don't think I, there's a. I don't. Think, how would how would a fight between you and Conor go? I mean, I think he'd wreck me. But if we're talking about in the amateurs. Yeah, like, you're I'm ducking him. I think you're ducking him. I'm ducking him. Yeah, at 18, at 18, yeah, me versus him at 18. 140, right? Because when he started out in the pros, when he started out in pro in pro MMA, he was 146, yeah? Him at 17 versus me at 17, 18, right? Amateur boxing, yeah, with the same amount of experience, couple years of experience, full-on training camp. What would he do? What would he do, yeah? 
what would he do? I mean, he was a better fighter than you. He had a better <laughs> amateur career. And, and you know what? He was a... Uh, uh, Promote. He 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 was a double champion in his uh, prior promotion. Was he your boyfriend? <laughs> Shut the fuck up, man! You do nothing, man. What the what? fuck are you talking about? Like he had a better career than you. He was an actual champion. Were you champion? CJ, you're coming onto my show, right? And you're asking me if I'm champion. Was I a champion? Were you champion? Yes or no? Because you weren't. Was you I a champion? Yes or no? And even, I'm I'm asking you. This is a question for you. It doesn't apply to me. It's you, you. You don't you don't know if I was or not. Are you you're really asking me this question? Even if you were a champion, were you double champion in two different divisions in a prior company before the UFC? Yes there's or no? There's very few people. There's very few people that have done that, CJ. Okay. You know what so I mean? Are you? You're, you're disrespecting Connor. You're saying, oh, man, you're his boyfriend. When he's had a better career. If I'm going to ask any UFC fighter, I'd ask the guys that beat you. Yeah? I'd ask the fighters that uh, have better resumes than you. You know, not guys that dedicated. You dedicate half time to the sport. You dedicate half time well, see, to, uh, to fucking realtor. Being a realtor, nobody even cares about. Like, which well, is it? Which well, is, I think it, that, is it a realtor? Is it an MMA fighter? Which is it? Mm -hmm. Well, CJ, I think that the people that I sold houses to, I think I matter to them, buddy. I mean, I mean, in, in a division where there's like 200 realtors in every single city, man, like, I mean, truth is, if you weren't a realtor, someone else would have sold them the house for probably the same amount of money. Uh, this is a completely different career. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just like there's millions of UFC fighters, there's been millions of MMA fighters, and I was number four in the world. That's pretty pretty damn good, right? So you no, you were number good. six. Facts. You were number six. Ranked. When I beat Kevin Lee, I was ranked number four. It was number six. It was number six. Your last rank, your highest rank was number six. It's what it says on Google. Yeah, well, you know what? Google's wrong sometimes. I think I remember being number four when I beat Kevin Lee, my did you, guy. Did you? Did you I mean, hey, man, search it up on Google. The first result that I saw was in 2018. You were ranked number six. Okay. Well, number six, number four, uh, it's pretty damn good, wouldn't you say? Oh, if I was like, the number six or you, you the number four ranked. Oh, no. Did you fight that? Tony Ferguson? Did you fight Tony Ferguson? <laughs> ben no, ben Henderson? Any of the lightweight? Okay. So what's the point in being a guy like Kevin Lee? who nearly everyone has beat in that division. You had an opportunity to fight Tony Ferguson. When? You're beating him? When? Your, your, whole, you, your whole time in the UFC. Your whole you're, time you're, uh, you were ranked, left behind. If you were ranked number fourth, like you were saying, why didn't you fight Tony Ferguson? Because all your after you lost to Khabib, Fox, you lost your chance for a world title. You could have fought oh, Tony man. Ferguson for the interim title, and then could have fought you could, and then could have fought Khabib again for the real title. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, yeah, CJ I, 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 versus Colt right here. Oh, big shot. Ladies and gentlemen, CJ was left behind in high school. All the footage. You're not even showing all the footage. Yeah. I mean, that's really good to see, CJ. You know what I mean? I mean, I whatever you say. I mean, like I said, you know, this was me out of shape. I wasn't in training camp. Because remember, in Canada, the gyms are closed for like a year. Like I guarantee, I guarantee, me at 18, yeah, back in back in the gyms, full on training camp. Yeah, me at around November when I was, you know, weighing around 135, 140 versus you, you at 18 or 17, <laughs> sparring. Oh, I'm like a twerp now. Yeah, five foot eleven. I mean, hey, what what, what does weight matter, right? There's, there, I mean, you wouldn't have the speed or anything. You know, I mean, what did you have an amateur boxing background? Did you ever, were you ever given opportunities to fight ex-Nationals champions and none of that? I'm in the same gym as Mo. I'm the only amateur to be signed, yeah? Mo Money Promotions. This is incredible. More money promotions. 
more Ladies money promotion, baby. <laughs> Pay for a view, baby. Search it up, yo. Shout out Mo the Mad Dame. Shout out to me, man, for keeping it real, man. You heard it here September first. I've, yo, it, we fighting on the undercard, man. Jason yeah. Wood. Oh, Jason yeah, Wood. I am uh, realizing very quickly. I'm not. Jason Woods is asking, um, "Am I taking this guy serious?" I realized, you know, I, I, you interview these guys because hey, you, man, wonder, you talking to me. You, you wonder who we're talking to. Gotta be. I can I can sell sand to an Arab. Yeah, you couldn't even <laughs> sell thirsty water to a thirsty African child, man. I mean, I, mean, I sold you're, a couple you're... houses in my day, my guy. Yeah, but I mean, you know. Realtor, it's really easy, you know. It's a, it's a easy, it's a easy job, you know. How many, how many houses have you sold? I mean, I don't need to sell houses, you know. I'm doing, I'm doing good income wise, you know. I mean, look, <laughs> and wait, aren't I eighteen? So what, what did you make? What 18? did you make last what year? At eighteen. What were you doing at eighteen? You know, you see, you see my profile. I got the Chrysler in that, you know. You keep talking about money wise, you know, hard work and dedication. You know, I've done a lot of uh, freelance landscaping. You know, I've worked at shipping companies, NRS shipping, Canadian Tire. You know, I've worked at plenty of jobs actually. Hard work and dedication. You know, I've, uh, you know, I've put plus plus years in the marketing game. You know, I'm really dedicated and say what you want, but I really am dedicated in becoming an ex professional. You know. Like I said, I'm representing two peoples, Portuguese and East Indians. You know, you can't say nothing about that. You know, I'm going to be that world champion. You know, I mean, look, man, I'm already given the opportunity. Holy shit, CJ! There's a count. There's a clock up. It says 20 seconds left. I don't know what this means. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what you want me to say, hey man. I, mean, I think you've been a disappointment. I think. Like me. Oh, I've been a disappointment now. You, you. You debate, you debate, yeah. You, you, if it's so easy, you do it then. You do it then, yeah. Hold on, let me, let me get you the do it, Hold on. Oh, we're freaking. What happened you, here? You we're just pressing things. Me at seventeen. Pr- you, you at seventeen versus me at seventeen, yeah. What, well, what, what would happen? You weren't even an amateur boxer yeah. then. What was your record? What was I your really amateur boxing record? Hell yeah, I want to do this. What was your? What was your amateur boxing record? Let's start there. What, what was debating, your Am I really boxing? debating a 19-year-old kid on – I would have taken you down and sm- – I would have beat the crap out of you. You're like a little skinny kid. You're, who do you hang out with? I'm five foot out with? I'm five you hang out. Right. You hang out with that – you hang out with that fat guy. You play, you're, you're in a, in a field boxing, my guy. Don't come on my Instagram. Yo, 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 you, you don't, don't know. Come on my Instagram well, and tell me you're going to beat me hey, up. Hey, don't disrespect that boy, yeah? What, 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 what sets were you down with? What sets were you down with when, when you were 18 or 19? Who were you down I wasn't with? Down, I wasn't down with a set. I don't get, I don't do sets, my guy, all right? I was freaking, I was, I was, a, I was in the gym. My, I was in the gym. That's my, that was my set. So I'm in the gym too. I'm in the gym. I guarantee I what gym are you in? Anyone out of my gym? What gym are you in? Hey, hey man, it, it, it's on my profile. What, 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 what's up? What, what, what? I just asked you. I don't look at you. No one looks at your profile. What's your what gym are you in? No one looks at my profile. A thousand followers on Instagram. Yeah. Congratulations. What gym are you in? No. Why? <laughs> what are you? What are you? What are you going to do? Yeah. Where, where are you going? I'm to asking. Be? I'm asking you a question, CJ. You're on the road to greatness. Okay. I'm trying to learn from you. What gym are you training at? I want to know the trainers and and what they have. What your re, your training regimen is? I'm trying to get. I'm. You're on. A, you're on the Call Me Out show. This is the biggest platform at your age that you've ever had. There's there's viewers watching. This is your time to sell. You're already blue by video. not being able to get on my, with the video. I guarantee this is not my, my my biggest platform. And when we're talking about the video, I literally, I, I could literally show screenshots. I click on the notification. It just takes me back to the video. It's not showing me nothing. Well, what do you think? Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, the right hand is nice. Left hook. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, he threw one punch. Sean, There's a big fat guy. Sean, it's Colton right there. You're beating up. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm the only fight you pull up. Yeah, re- real fast. <laughs> you know, I mean, hey, now, let, let's pull up where Masvidal handed you. He bred you. He 
he made you. Khabib made you. You ducked Tony Ferguson, Benson Henderson when they were in the same division as you. You ducked the greats, man. Eddie Alvarez, Justin Gaethje. I ducked them. You, you, you ducked both of those guys. Like, well, those those fights were offered me, and I said no. I, I, I... Well, you just admit it. Those fights were offered to you, and you said no. That, no, that never happened, my guy. Hold on, hold on, we've got it. Where is it? Oh, we got it. I got it. CJ versus, what was his name? Go. Jason? Who's this guy? He's got to be a world champion, right? Bro, get out. Don't get out of balance. Yo, don't get out of balance. Jason, what are you doing? I was a six feet tall black dude. You're not even showing that. I spot another guy that was 200 pounds. You're seeing fights of me like out of shape, not even in the gym because of COVID restrictions, man. You're, that's what you're seeing. You're not even seeing the legit sparring in that. You haven't seen oh, nothing. I guarantee. I guarantee. When I'm back in the gym, right, late September, I'll resend you some of my some, whatever. Hold on, here we go. Oh, oh, oh right hand. Bro, oh, there's even. Oh, right hand. 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 Oh, big overhand in this guy, and he's see, Colton is done. He's not Colton. That's Jake. Saying I sparred Colton. I never sparred Colton. I never fought All right. Colton. CJ, I, don't I have a feeling. CJ, I have a feeling we're gonna hang up on the, on you right now, and this will be the last the world oh, will ever hear of CJ Ben Court. I hope I'm wrong. I hope you find a better gym. I hope you find some trainers. I hope you start listening to the people who have made it way farther than you. This was. An absolute disappointment. You didn't get on. You didn't come with the, the energy that I thought you were going to bring on. But you know what? Here, 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 here. The Call Me Out show, you don't always hit gems. Against a washed up. And ladies and gentlemen, that was CJ Betancourt. Oh my God. Wow. Wow. I'm dumber for having listened to that guy. Whew. Yeah. I apologize for that. I didn't think it was going to go like that. He said he was Colton's friend. Colton Capone's smarter than him. At least, I mean, this guy, Colton, I got to be honest with you. Colton last week came with some, he came with some facts about MMA. And yeah, even when he told me that I messed up against Donald Cerrone and I shouldn't have played the kick game, I should have boxed with him. Ray Longo told me the same thing after. You know what I mean? Wise advice, but coming from the wrong person. I don't want to hear from you, a big fat guy in uh, a fat kid in, in Winnipeg. You know what I mean? I want to hear from a coach, a teammate, a relative. You know what I mean? Like a a, a close relative, not a third cousin named Sean. <laughs> third oh cousin. man! Well, that was CJ. That was an absolute disappointment. I apologize to everybody watching. We lost all our viewers because of CJ. I thought that was going to be a little bit better. We we got to get these guys on video next time. Yeah. Yeah, we'll figure that out. I think uh, what I'll, I'll do is I'll get with these guys ahead of time and, and teach them how to come in and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, we're working out the kinks. We're working out the kinks here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tony Bananas thinks that uh, CJ is uh, third cousin Sean, so. Very interesting theory he, there. He could be he could be third cousin Sean. Um, we're gonna have Tanner Bozer at Bulldog Bozer at Bulldozer. Excuse me, at Bulldozer Bozer. We're gonna have him on, and we are going to talk to him. He said he's coming on. He should be on logging on soon. Sweet, and. Uh, we're going to talk to him about third cousin Sean. Oh, shit. Al is live. Macarion 1600 coming from YouTube. 
Nice. We're everywhere, baby. YouTube, Facebook, Haps, Twitter, and you're getting comments from everywhere. So we are glad you're tuning in. So make sure, don't be scared to hit the share button. Bring all your friends in. Oh, CJ's still going. I, I can't even. <laughs> CJ, CJ really needs to get a grip on things. Oh, uh, that could be nice. Uh, he, he says he, uh, even though it was heated, he appreciates you letting him come on and speak in his mind. And he can't wait to prove you wrong when he gets an Olympic gold. So best of luck. Yeah, good riddance. <laughs> I don't. I, the day that uh, that he gets an Olympic gold, could you imagine that guy with an Olympic medal? No. On the on the podium, it's incredible. It's incredible. He does. He does sound like he was the third cousin Sean. <laughs> and the Masvidal robbery, he really he's hating on me. Yeah. People don't appreciate. I mean, I think I. You know what I mean? I don't want to make it all about me, but. I think I have a pretty. I think I, I held my own. I was one in there for tough, and this guy doesn't appreciate it. You can't make everyone happy. No. And CJ, I don't really give. I don't really care what he thinks. I want to, you know. I had him on. He he's he sounded like he was going to give us something. Wasn't able to figure out how to get on. And then absolutely blew it. Yeah. But I would expect nothing. More coming from I, you know, I I did want to ask him what was up with him sending me. He sent me like ten selfies before telling me he was gonna beat me up. And I'm like, what? I get it. like you get it. You know how to he with his hands wrapped. Everyone had his hands wrapped. I was like, <laughs> well, he knows how to wrap his hands. Maybe I didn't. You know, Tony Tony Van Bananas is volunteer to come on if we need to kill time before Bozer comes on. Yeah, I think we got Bozer. I think Bozen's coming on pretty soon. Yep. Yep. So, uh, interesting, interesting fights over the weekend. I hope I hope you get a chance to watch them. Oh uh, man, what a what a great weekend of fights. Seo Gan looked great, right? He looked miles ahead of Derek Lewis. I'm a big Derek Lewis fan, but it looked like it was two guys on different levels. No, it really did. I mean, he got in and did – he put put together some combos, and he was out of there. He never – he made Derek Lewis – he made Derek Lewis look not great. No. And that happens sometimes in fights. Derek Lewis, you know – First round, second round doesn't look great, but he hangs in there even when he's exhausted and he lands shots. And he never was able to land that shot. With the with the Black Beast, it's not over until it's over. Yep. And uh, even, you know, right up until the end, Sirogan put him out. Incredible. I mean, the quickness on that guy too. I mean, have you – listen, I'm not a mixed martial artist in any way, shape, or form, but have you ever seen a guy that size move that fast? No, no, he looked good. He looked good, and and I'm gl- I'm kind of glad they did. Looking back now, I'm glad that they did the interim title, um, because it really put Cyril Gan over. I think him going right into. I mean, I guess it was would have been the Black Beast, right? Yeah, would have got the fight, but they made this one, and I think. Uh, I think yeah, it's it's Siragon versus Francis next, right? It's got to be. It's got to be. It's got to be. And, and you know, while we're on the subject, are we ever going to see John Jones at heavyweight ever? I mean, he I, apparently he turned down a Stipe fight. I think he just wants to fight for the title. You know, I think he just wants to fight for the title. And I'm I'm in. I'm in for that. Yeah. John Jones comes in. He looks like he's a monster in the gym now. Yeah. And uh, yeah, if they if they can get him, you know, the money thing, they don't want to pay John Jones, I think. And and uh, guys are coming out now. Sugar Sean's coming out. Francis Ngannou's coming out. These guys want they want to get paid. Now ain't nothing going up but the rent. Inflation's going up, and these contracts are staying the same. We got sponsorships. We got. Crypto.com. Everyone's making money but these fighters. Man, 
Now, on, on the flip, though, are, is he taking a risk not fighting during his prime years? Or is he better off trying to go to another promotion trying to get paid? John Jones. John Jones. Well, you know, that's the thing. The UFC's got him probably locked into a, a contract. And they're trying to get him they're pr- trying to get him to fight a heavyweight on uh, a two year ago contract a contract that's two years old that you know the, the the US dollar I don't think it's worth the same. No. So if he signed his contract two, three years ago, how long has he been out? Let's say he signed a contract just for an arb- just a number, a million dollars. A million dollars now is not worth what it was three years ago. You know, that's a great question. I'd like to know when the last time John Jones legitimately fought. So it looks like he has not fought since, wow, February 2020. So it's a year and a half, over a year and a half. What was the last fight? Was it? Um... Uh, Dominic Reyes. Nah, yeah. Yeah, his last three fights, Anthony Smith, Thiago Santos, and Dominic Reyes, and uh, didn't look great in those last two. Like he could have, it looked like he could have lost either of those fights. Again, I'm not a professional mixed martial arts judge, but. And we got Tanner Bozer is trying to get on. Tanner Bozer is trying to get on. Okay. He's not sure how to get on your feed. Well, let me see if I can find him if he has a user. Got him. Tanner Tanner is another guy that hasn't been uh hasn't been too active recently. His last fight versus OSP. Um about a year a year. I don't know, that was Oh the what year OSP again? fight? That was recently. Yeah, that was recently and then yeah, yeah. Let me look it up real quick. I have it here. He fought OSP uh, June, and then right before that, he fought either Latifi also in June. So June fifth and June twenty sixth. Oh, that's a June wild. Off. That's a wild turnaround. Split split decision. A loss against Ilya Latifi. It was Thanks, the leg, the leg chops. The leg chops. He, he is here. He's in the room. Would you like me to bring him in, ladies and gentlemen? The third cousin of Sean. <laughs> we have Tanner Bozer. Hey, how you guys What's doing? What's up, my man? Some weird audio there. Uh, not much. <laughs> oh, man, I can't hear him. Oh, no. I can hear him. Yeah, this happens sometimes. We're, uh... I'm not sure what happened. Let me take him out, take him back in. All right, try this one more time. Okay. All right. Tanner, do we have you? Um, I'm here. Can oh, you hear man. him out? I can hear him. But... I cannot hear him. We're not getting any feedback on his audio. That's strange. I heard him yeah. for a second there. Um, let me try to turn him up. See if that works. Tanner, okay. we're working through this, man. We got this new app. Haps, we're growing together we're gr- with this ha- with this app. All right, oh, I think we got him now. Yes, yes, he is in. Okay, can you hear him, Al? Try. I can hear him. Awesome. There we go. What is up, man? How are you doing? I'm doing good. Just finished the lift here, so. Yeah. Do you ha- do you have a fight coming up? Is there any? No, no, not yet. I'm asking for one. I'm hoping to get one in September or October, but uh, they told me that um, most of those cards are already full. But I think the rumor that they're trying to come to Alberta, um, and if they do, then they'll be safe me for that. So they're probably just waiting to either confirm that or confirm that they're not doing that before they book me anywhere else. Gotcha. So, yeah, so they're probably holding on to you and trying to get that worked out. What's the what's the situation like with uh, COVID up there with the fighting? Would they have to? Are there are there arena shows going on right now, or how's it working? Yeah, um, I don't know if anything's really happened in our like bigger arenas yet, but the Calgary Stampede, the huge event, they did that uh, 
that was a few weeks ago and um the rest of the country got real mad about it but did that and uh we have live fights again here starting this weekend and like a little smaller shows like stuff you can watch on fight pass so um it looks like it's going in the right direction so hopefully it does and ufc is able to uh come here in the near future it's uh it's good it's opening up it it seems like it's almost going backwards here in new york um oh yeah they had uh the, yeah this msg card with uh michael chandler's on the card and um He's saying he's not going to get vaccinated before the fight and that he might not be able to fight because in New York now there's a, a, a new uh, bill just got passed that you have, you're going to have to be vaccinated to do anything indoors, which kind of puts That's this MSG fight. Yeah, it puts this MSG fight in a little bit of uh, jeopardy. If everybody needs to be vaccinated and, and the fighters do too, I mean, maybe they would put a – make a, a little exception for the fighters but yeah it's not it's uh yeah 100 tony bananas says it's 100 percent trying to go backwards in new york we're in we're uh we're in trouble here new york is new york is is struggling um a lot of people are leaving going going elsewhere going going uh going south leaving new york and and we can't do anything here so yeah it's crazy but um, I, I I was I was dying laughing at the tweet you put out. Yeah, uh, I figured that was that was an appropriate time to uh, spin spin that one. You know, um, as of yet, uh, is the, he's undefeated. He's the interim champion, and you got the best fighters and best coaches in the world trying to dissect what you could possibly do to beat that. And uh, no one's been able to figure it out, but hold up. My third cousin, Sean Hartsman in Bonneville has a fucking idiot. This is incredible <laughs> here. He said, uh, let's pull it up again. Okay, we so got it. It. I, I... After I lost to gain, my third cousin sent me a Facebook message with a bunch of advice telling me what I should have done to have won the fight. Anyway, if Ngannou wants to hire him in preparation for this bout, his name is Sean and he sells car parts and has never trained. <laughs> Absolutely hysterical, incredible. Did you grow up with Sean or is this just like a Not guy that came on once you made it onto the what did you made it onto the scene? No, um it's a small town so you know people. Um I'm actually I was pretty good friends with his brother, uh, Kevin, and I didn't actually know they were my third cousins till later on. That's some small town stuff. Uh-oh. We may have lost him. He froze for a second, and then, uh, yeah, he got disconnected somehow. Gosh darn it. This, this is why I came, Al. I wanted to know the legend of Cousin Sean. Well, we got we got a little bit out of him there. Third cousin Sean. It sounds like he's real. Yeah. He's got a brother. He's got a brother, and and Tanner knew his brother. Uh, uh, we have that, an interesting uh, interesting comment here from uh, Keith Peterson. Wants to know: Is that Dominic Cruz, or am I drunk? No, I don't think this. No, is the that way. was that was CJ Betancourt. <laughs> This is not the real Keith Peterson. Oh, he's back. Is he back? Nope, he's disconnected. So I, he may have had some bad internet wherever he was. I don't think it was on our end. I think he's trying to come back now. It looked like he was uh, in the car. Yep. Yep. So shout out to the uh, the fake Keith Peterson accounts. Who who would Who would do that? Put out move, a fake move out to Ar- Anthony Sinecore, move out to Arizona. It's the place to be. A lot of people, yeah. you know, uh, Druckman, John Druckman, Long Island legend. He's moving, a good friend of mine, moving out of New York. He kind of did a world tour. He went to Arizona, Florida, 
And he just sold his house. He's heading down to North Carolina. And he's going to buy a house down there. He brought all his cash with him. And he's just going to set up shop down there. People want, People are leaving New York. And they're leaving by the by the boatload. Uh, what do you make of Dustin seeming pushing for a fight against Nate? Aaron, did you see a video of Dustin training with Joshua Fabia? No. Tell me that's not real. I I think I uh, I think I saw. We might have to send it to you. I don't know if I had if I got it on here. Oh yeah, we're gonna send this to you. Oh wow, Maybe I will can pull it up. it up because it looks to me to be an authentic video. I watched it a couple of times and I really tried to break it down. And maybe there will be some people out there that can tell us. It looks like Dustin, and it looks like Fabia. And to be honest with you, it looks like the Fabia. I mean, I don't know. It looks like it could be old because that could be Diego. And I don't know what gym this is. We're going to have to get the internet to break this down. I, I looked in the comments of the guy that posted it. Got the movie. All right, let me see if I can download it real quick. Now, gym. I have a question. He, he wasn't hanging upside down, right? No, thank God. That was so sad to watch. It was hard to watch. Ugh. Okay, file. All Shout right. out Joe Highland. All right, I've almost got it. So give me just a second to upload it. Tanner is trying to come back on. It looks like he keeps going in and out and in and out. And so, Tanner, if I can, I hear you. Yeah, I can hear you guys. Can you guys hear me at least? Yeah, we now can we can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, my, I don't know what's up. My phone's maybe being a piece of shit or something, but uh, right now, like, I'm. Oh, darn. Yeah, we got a little bit of reception problem. We did. Tanner. Hey, hey. At hey. <laughs> Bulldozer Bozer on Twitter. I don't, I don't think it's our fault this time. So uh, we're making progress. Yeah, I mean, listen, it would have been great to have him on. Technology. You know okay. what I mean? He's back. He's back. Well, I'm, I haven't changed anything. I don't know what's going Tanner, on. Tanner, are, um, are you here? Oh, I'm no. Here. Here. Can you guys- we got you, man. All right, you got me for a second anyways. I don't know. So what was I... what was the uh what was the input that that your cousin gave you? Oh, yeah, sorry. I was starting to tell you guys that I didn't really grow up with him. It was a small town. I found out later he was my third cousin, which makes sense because he had the last my great grandma. You guys can hear me still or no? I can hear you. Yeah. Uh the input was um I don't know, he messaged me shortly after and was telling me stuff like you know, you need to learn a couple takedowns. So I'm like, yeah, that's the reason I didn't take them down. It's because I don't know any takedowns. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. And uh, that I needed to work on leg strikes because it, because leg strikes make it so the person I'm fighting doesn't know where my strikes are coming from. Look, if you want to troll me, the consensus on the internet is that all Bozer does is leg kick. Like the one thing the idiots agree on, I do well, and he's so goddamn stupid, he thinks I don't even do that. I, uh, yeah, there was a lot of dumb in that message. I can't repeat it verbatim, but it was dumb. Okay, Al is having trouble hearing again. I can hear you good, Tanner. So this is crazy. I'm not sure what's going on. You're gonna have to play translator. Yeah, I'm gonna have to play translator here, but, uh, Basically, you know, saying he, he's given him all types of information, like, uh, you know, he should have used the leg strikes. I think in the message it said leg chops. And, Incredible, uh, the leg chops. I love that. So good, the leg chops. So, if I had uh, – you guys the message, but I can't get out of this app, and uh, I'm just on my phone here. My phone's okay. struggling maintaining the apps. Uh, are you hearing him now, Al? I'm not. That's so strange. So – Tanner, do me a favor. Try to go back out and then back in the yeah, app. Yeah. That worked last week, and uh, we'll keep we'll keep the line open for you. <clears throat> okay. So we I wanted to ask, I want to ask uh, Tanner. You know, everyone's seen him fight. He's fought 
some of the best. He's fought the best yeah. in the UFC. Um, it seems like he's got a kind of an interesting. Uh, his his mother owned a gym. I think it was a karate gym, and he was homeschooled. We good here? I, okay, we got you now. All right, and he can hear him. Okay. Bringing him in. Either way, you guys can talk, so um, perfect. Oh, and he got disconnected again. Gosh darn it. You heard him for a second, didn't you? You know, to be in there with a guy like Andre Olovsky had to be an incredible experience. Just, I mean, I thought it was a close fight. You could tell there was a lot, a lot of mutual respect between the two in there. The punches that were thrown had a huge impact on the fight. Oh, oh, I can hear. All right, Tanner, we are in. We are on. Don't. Yeah, move. yeah we're. Tanner, you can hear us, right? Yeah, the th- the um. Service thing on the app is switching between great and poor. Uh, there's no in between apparently. Right now it's great and now it's poor, so I don't know what the hell. <laughs> All right, well we'll we'll work we'll work through it. Um, Tanner, I wanted to I wanted to get I so I read I'm reading that you were homeschooled, and that your how did you get you got into Fighting, I'm guessing your mother was she owned the gym. Tell me, I'm, I was reading a little bit up about your 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 childhood. It's interesting to me. Yeah, um, I was homeschooled till high school. I went. Shit, you guys can hear me now. Yep. Okay, yeah, I was homeschooled till high school. I went to high. Shoot, see if we can call him, maybe. I don't know if you got a direct line to him or not. Maybe we'll just call him and, and, and we'll get a better connection that way. I think wherever he is, he just has some poor service right now. So, um, yeah, because he keeps coming in and out and in and out. So, uh, and uh, I really want to hear what he has to say here. Some good stuff. Yep. Oh, I can hear you now. I don't know. Did you hear any of that or no? Uh, we heard some of it. I didn't Fuck. hear much. Sorry, guys. That's all right, man. Okay. Yeah, I'm, anyway. getting, in and, I'm getting in and out. Okay. Yeah, Maybe mine's we'll just try... staying at... Oh, so that's okay. I just messaged you. Maybe we could... Uh, maybe you want to... We can just call you. You want to just... Okay. Yeah, that seems to be We're working. Okay. Send a, yeah, send a... Send over the number and we'll give you a call. Perfect. All right, I'm gonna let's. I'm gonna get him off of this for now, and uh, we're gonna get him in here. We're gonna ask him all the questions we've ever wanted to ask, and it'll work out good. I have the Dustin video for after, so hopefully he's sending you that number over right now. Now, can you ask me why you think Nate Diaz doesn't train wrestling? Er day, er day. Why doesn't train wrestling er day? Because in my opinion, some wrestling, he would easily become champ, and then you can fight him and whoop. There it is! Exclamation point. Macarion sixteen hundred. I appreciate you writing in. Why doesn't Nate Diaz train wrestling? You know, I think he's uh, he's just a an old school jujitsu guy who just likes to fight. I don't think he has any interest in taking guys down. I don't think he uh, and and to be honest with you, it's been working for him. The the fights that he's lost, yeah, he's lost, but uh, because of wrestling. Um, but he's had a lot of success doing what he's been doing. When he when he wins, it's a submission or it's a knockout, and it's uh, pretty spectacular. So I think that you know, if you, if uh, if you, if it's not broke, don't fix it. The fight it's that he's lost because he's been taken down. There's always the out of 
well, he didn't try to fight me. He tried to wrestle me, and he held me down. And it's usually decision loss. The only the only guy that I uh, really remember beating up on Nate Diaz was uh, Josh Tom Josh Thompson, right? Yeah, about knockout. All right, I'm, we're attempting to get Tanner back now. They threw in the Should towel, be. didn't they? If I'm if I recall. Yeah, they threw in the towel on that one. Tanner. Hey guys, can you hear me now? Perfect. Hey. Oh yeah. There you we go. We got we got Tanner on. We made it. So we were asking you before we got cut off. Uh, I was reading your your mother owned a a gym. I'm guessing it was a karate gym. Uh, no, my mom owned just like a. Oh come on! Oh man! I just just decided to switch you guys over to Bluetooth. Okay, we can hear you now. Oh, there we go. Oh, you scared us. <laughs> that would have been terrible. Uh, my mom just owned a workout gym. Uh, I grew up doing karate though. I did karate. It was the one martial art in uh, Bonneville, like town I grew up in. I did it from when I was 11 to when I was, I think, 19. So, yeah. Trained, trained out of my mom's gym-ish. I mean, what I thought was training when I was like 21 with a couple buddies. We didn't really know what the hell we were doing. I uh, had a couple fights just out of there. And uh, then I moved to Edmonton to train at an actual gym. Yeah. Where, are you, where are you training now? Uh, I still train in Edmonton. I train at Frankly's Mai Tai here, and I train at our MMA gym. is just outside of Edmonton in a city called Sherwood Park, basically Edmonton, and it's called Shave Bears MMA. Nice. How uh, I always feel like the heavyweights, they always have a hard time finding good guys to train with. Is that a problem up there? We have more big guys than most places seem to. I got a few bigger training partners i kind of train with middleweights and up like i got i got uh, a couple heavyweights but i train with a couple light heavyweights a couple middleweights uh pretty good pretty good team and it's been working so far so and then uh so you were you were working as a bouncer and yeah, for, and, tr and training full-time I were yeah, I um, I was yeah. probably the small I I did that for a, a summer I was probably the smallest bouncer ever in the history of the Dizzy Lizard. But what a great <laughs> way to you know pay support yourself while you're coming up, you know, on the regional scene, sure. right? I'm guessing you were you were doing that until you got into the UFC. Yeah, I did it for um, almost six years. And it was ideal. I mean, I, if my first training session wasn't until like noon, even it, I'd still get enough sleep. Cause I mean, you, you know, you finish at three, you got to drive home, go to bed, whatever. If you go to sleep at four thirty, you can still wake up pretty good at ten thirty or 11. It's not so bad. So, um, I just wouldn't train too often early in the morning and kind of just like a shifted schedule. It wasn't even really an inconvenience. Just kind of staying up, waking up late, staying up late. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta have some, you gotta have some good stories from the from the bouncing days. Yeah, then there's there's a lot there's a lot. Yeah, I stopped working there honestly because someone burned it down. <laughs> what, kind of, what kind of place was what kind of place was this, like a club or was it more of a bar? Oh yeah, it was a strip club. Oh, there we go. Yeah, someone burned down the strip club. They did. They they tried and failed once and did a shit job of it. We just caught a couple of morons on camera, like breaking their hand trying to get in the window and kind of lighting the entrance on fire. But it was just like minimal smoke damage, and then we opened the next day. But uh, they got the job done uh, correctly the final time. Whoever wanted it gone hired people who were uh, knew what they were doing. They threw a bunch of Molotov cocktails on the roof and it burned, burned inside, and that was it. Oh my God! So I mean, you, were you single when you were working at the strip club? Uh, for a large part of that, I started dating my girlfriend. Uh, well, we were dating for maybe 
not quite a year, I guess, when uh, the strip club burned down. And it was, yeah, it was probably a good thing that it did because not easy, uh, not easy for um, a girl if you're working at a strip club, that's for sure. You didn't meet, did you meet her in the strip club? Yeah, she, she worked there. Oh, okay. I got, well, I mean, I guess if you're there together, but it could still, I'm sure, yeah. I, I would imagine that could be, uh, that could be uh, problematic, but definitely, uh, definitely a point of tension. Still, yeah. And that was how long ago? Oh, uh, when did it burn down? In twenty nineteen, I think. Something like that. Yeah, I mean, it was a point of tension. We're, it's all it's all good now. It's uh, in ashes in a parking lot in Southside Edmonton. But uh, yeah, um, I think that was twenty nineteen when it got burned down. I was actually not here. I was in. I was in Arizona for my cousin's wedding, and then I was driving to Vegas for one of my friends fighting on the Contender Series. Um, and then I, I remember I like rolled over in bed, my alarm, and I looked, and my phone's got all these notifications. But oh, diamonds burned down, and I, oh man, it was. I, I was laughing so fucking hard. Like it, it sucked. Like when, it, like obviously, when I was like, it was a really good job. I made pretty good money doing not that much. I can't complain i worked with my buddies it was honestly it was pretty fun it was a great job but it was still fucking hilarious <laughs> someone burned it down i don't know but then i had to, then i had to work in shittier clubs for a while till i started getting paid more in ufc and that fucking sucked so i definitely did miss it in those times what happened to all the strippers they started working at other strip clubs. They weren't yeah. in the building when it burned down. Don't worry. <laughs> it was thank it was yeah, th- it was up to the ship. So, uh, how old were you? You saw Andre Olovsky. When was your first? Because uh, he was like when I was coming up. When I, I mean, not coming, not even coming. When I first got into the sport, he was he was the champion. Two thousand five. I and you're you're thirty years old right now. Yeah. So, I mean, you were like a young kid and he was already at the top. Yeah, which is pretty crazy that he's been able to fight at such a high level for so long. Isn't it unreal? What do you think? What do you think it is with this guy? I, I don't know. Every time you think, um, every time you think that maybe, oh, yeah, Arlovsky's lost a few in a row. Maybe, maybe that's that. Then he goes on a winning streak. He's done it multiple times. I don't know. He's uh, he's uh, apparently he's built for it because yeah, he's um, he's outlasted guys that beat him, guys that beat him, and were champions, and they were great. Guess what? Arlovsky's still there, so there's something to be said for that. Yeah, it was uh, UFC 53 was the first UFC I ever went to. He beat Justin Eilers in the. Uh... What was the, what was it like when you got the Colts for that fight? How did how did that come about? Oh, I thought it was really cool actually. Um I mean I had I had won a couple by knockout and I was still trying to fight Maurice Green, but UFC wasn't having it and they're like, No, fight someone better, basically. And I'm like, Well, what about Arlovsky? Because it just seemed like a logical step up and they're like, Yeah, okay. And then they just called Arlovsky and of course he just fights anybody, so got made pretty quick. I was excited, you know. Tough knew it was going to be a tough fight and everything, but it was a fight I definitely thought was cool, you know? Uh, I mean, that's like one of those fights where it's almost like it, it must have been surreal to, to you know, step in the cage against them. It's like, yeah, in uh, a way. I mean, I, I like to think I didn't bring it in there with me or something like that, but it, it was, um, yeah, it's like, you know, shit, I'm fighting Andre Arlovsky. It was cool. And then uh, Elia Latifi split decision loss. Your 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 third cousin Sean had a lot to say about that. I mean, close fight. Um, and then you went right into that Ovin St. Prue fight. Almost a, what two three weeks later? Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, Sean had stuff to say about it because. Well, I messaged him saying that you wanted him on your, your podcast because um, I actually wasn't even going to bother because I just don't want to talk to this fucking idiot. But <laughs> I saw him 
post on Facebook where he shared like a screenshot of you posting that. And I'm like, all right, he thinks it's cool. I guess, you know, he wants to do it and, um, kind of funny. So I'll, I'll set this up. And then instead he just launched off into a tirade of like the four fights that he hadn't talked to me about since like, never mind. I don't know why. I I messed, I messed you up even more. You had to take more abuse from this guy. Uh, No, it's, it's okay. Uh, Um, yeah, no, I fought uh, Latifi, split decision. I was pissed off about that one, and I just wanted to get right back in there. So I was asking for a fight. I'm like, I'm still in shape. I'm not hurt. Everything's fine. Just get me in there as quick uh, as quickly as you can, basically. And they came and First, it was supposed to be Gustafson, but he kept wanting to pick his specific day and being a fucking princess about it. And then uh, they gave me... OSP instead and how about next week against Ovin St. Pru? I'm like, yeah, okay, sure. So it ended up ended up being good for me because I was able to kind of bounce back from it and just needed it. You know, you're kind of in limbo when you're on a two fight skid. Like I, I gotta either gotta gotta shit or get off the pot. Like either I'm gonna win and everything's gonna be all good or I'm gonna lose and I'm gonna get, you know, potentially cut or something and I'll have to figure out my life a little bit. So I just didn't like being in that kind of state of purgatory. It's got to be a huge relief to be, you know, you know, when you're on a two fight losing streak, like you said, it, the next one could be the last one. What was the, what was the, uh, what was the game plan going in with the pressure? How do you, how do you, how do you handle a thing like that? I had to go in and I had to, I had to just be extremely aggressive and just really go for the kill the whole time. Cause after that, like the Arlovsky fight was, a very close decision and I lost it. I even unanimously lost it. Every judge gave me a different round of the fight, but not one judge gave me two of them. So I was frustrated. Like, okay, that fight was close though. I watch it. I didn't do enough. I have regrets about that fight and I let it be too close. Okay. Latifi, I feel like I, I kicked the shit out of that guy. And then I went and lost the decision. I'm like, I can't go to the judges. I'm not going to fucking win. Apparently there's no way. So I have to, I have to go in and, and just leave it, either knock him out or, or get finished myself. Like, I just got to go in guns blazing and it, it worked. So that's the, yeah. I mean, two, two decision losses. It, it's, uh, I like the attitude. You just go in there, like, fuck it. I, I got two. Cause you could have won. I mean, both of those losses could have been wins very easily. A couple of different things with the judges. Or, you know, the Olofsky fight was also close. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a tough position to be in, to go into a, a third fight down two close fights. Um, so I think a, a lot of people would be maybe gun shy, but you definitely, definitely were not. Yeah, no, just kind of circumstances worked out as such and it, it ended up being good for me. So now I'm coming off of a knockout win and hopefully I can, hopefully I can keep that up and. Yeah, have a good rest of the year, I suppose. That's it. The relief is off. You can go in there. It's kind of like you got a, a new, a fresh start now. You got that win. You got that that whole thing out of the way, and now you're looking looking forward. Um, oh yeah, did did you? Uh, what happened with Alir Latifi's arm? You broke it in the fight. Yeah, I think I probably broke it actually in the first round. I guess if I had to guess, but I'm not positive yeah i broke his arm in two places apparently look the guy's tough as nails like he continued fighting with a broken arm and the eye that i punched by the way in round two he still says i poked it but i punched him with a closed fist you can watch the freaking replay in slow-mo if you want but no, absolutely uh, the guy's the guy tough because he was able to continue fighting he took me down in round three and uh, that's a fight i think where i wish i, I wish there was a crowd I think uh, a little bit of booze might have got it stood up, and um, yeah, I wasn't able to get up. I mean, I wanted to. I get a lot. Why didn't you try and get up? For fuck's sake! He chose to pin. I was pinned, and and he didn't look to advance his position, and he didn't look to do damage or anything. And there was no space, and I couldn't create any space. I tried, and it didn't work. But um, apparently, he did the right thing because he won the decision. So I can't knock the strategy. He won the fight. Uh, he did the wise thing, but yeah, it was, um, I guess, um, 
frustrating in, in the way that I really like round two what well, the one judge gave me at a 10 eight because I almost finished them and then round one I don't know like he held me down for under a minute with no strikes on the ground and no submission attempts and then I beat him up on the feet for four minutes and he got the round on two judges scorecards I don't know or whatever yeah judging judging all over the place when when you have a 10 eight round and the other guys have a 10 nine and then even the other way the following round it's uh yeah. yeah it's that's so frustrating I can only I can only imagine we're going into the the same proof fight I mean, that's like a frustrating situation, but man, you uh, you got in the win column and it's it's all good. Now Gustafson, he retired, no? No, he, he, his ret- he unretired. He unretired, came to heavyweight, and he lost to Verdum last year. And uh, then I got actually offered to fight him before Latifi, and I said yes, and then he. Uh, was going back to 205 instead. And I'm like, oh, okay, fair enough. So then I fought Latifi. And then right away after that, it was like, UFC is like, hey, do you want to fight Gustafson? I'm like, I thought he was going down to 205. I'm like, no, he's going to stay at heavyweight. I'm like, oh, cool. So since his training partner just beat me, now he thinks he's going to stay at heavyweight and I'm easy or something like that. But then he wanted like a specific date in August. I'm like, I want a quick turnaround. How about, how about we fight in a week or two? Like, I, I want to fight right now. I'm still in shape and I'm kind of pissed off. And, no, he wants this day or whatever. All right, well, why? Why does he get to, like, pit? first he's he's jumping weight classes up and down, and then he decides that he's staying at heavyweight, and now he wants me to wait till late August. Too fucking bad. He just posted on Instagram that he's good to fight anyone whenever, so let's go then right now. And he didn't want to, and then I beat OSP, and now he's going back to 205, so whatever. Oh, is that what it is? He's going back to 205? Now he is again, yeah. Oh, that's it's frustrating. Fun, I feel like but, I feel like that would be a great fight. That's a fight for you, man. It would be an exciting fight. I mean, he's really good, really wicked striker. It should be a fun one, but he's going to 205. I don't have to worry about him right now, I suppose. Absolutely. So who do you got? Who are you uh, – you have anyone in mind? I'd ask for Big Ben. I just feel like it makes sense. Ooh, I like that fight. Yeah, we're both – we're both kind of just outside the top 15 and uh, he's a vet. He's been around forever. He's fought everyone. And he, he recently complained that UFC wasn't letting him fight anybody. And he's like, well, there's apparently there's two guys and allowed to fight in the division. I'm like, ah, I figure that they do me versus big Ben. So I might as well, might as well just ask for that one. He wants to fight. So you think, you think it's going to happen? Um, it makes too much sense, so probably not. Just like the Maurice Green thing. I thought that made the most <laughs> sense in the world and they didn't want to do it. So I don't truth be told, I don't really care who I fight. I'm I'm good for I'm good for whatever. I I just hope it's uh hope it's before the end of the year. I hope I hope I get one in the fall. I love it. I'm looking forward to it. I have one last question for you. When you get that big fight, will you be asking third cousin Sean? For his for his uh for his advice going into it. Man, he, I only ever hear from him after I lose. It's the weirdest thing. I don't know why he doesn't give me advice before I'm going in, man. I only whenever I lose a fight, he's got a lot to say, but it's just radio silence from the guy if uh if I win or before a fight or anything. So Does he have um, some yeah. valid does he have some valid advice at all? Do you want me to read it? Yeah, let's let's hear it. <laughs> now it's getting good. This is it. This is I'll go, I'll go. I'll go back. This is this is the Cyril gone loss message. Please take this with a grain of salt. You need a third fight game plan because that was my second fight in UFC. If you don't get first round, need to take round two, or you're obviously looking for a KO round three. I know you're probably already pissed and don't care to listen to a guy like me. I've 100% watched more UFC fights than anyone you've ever met, even in the UFC. Fucking sick. I remember you fighting 205 and thought you were super cut. I know you've learned a lot since then, and it shows, but you're always going to be fighting bigger fighters, even up to 285 pounds. You need wrestling or leg strikes or clinch work to close distance. Head movement could be better, in my opinion. 
Going forward striking, it looks pretty nice, but becomes predictable. Usually you have backwards head movement, but not these past few fights. Your leg kicks are one of your top tools to gain points, slow movement, and make your opponent think about a different variable of striking. Since Hag, you've kept your chin tucked, and if you can, uh, can rely on your movement, you could rip the inside. Seems like when you get there, you push your feet back. I'm here for you, bro. I am cheering you on. Just probably the most hardcore MMA fan in Alberta. No problem telling me to fuck off. And your brother is actually a savage. Owner. And then I replied with, take this with a grain of salt too. Suck my dick. You've never done anything. <laughs> I love the reply. <laughs> it's so frustrating. Like, it's so frustrating <laughs> when someone that, I mean, he's he said it right there. He's watched a whole bunch of fights. I mean, I'm sure that, I'm sure some of those things, they might, they, I mean, it sounds like good advice for anybody. Head movement, base, you know, basic good advice. But you want that coming from a coach. You want that coming from a teammate. Uh, coming from that guy, take with a grain you of salt, suck from, my okay. dick. You want, it, <laughs> you want it from somebody who actually knows what they're talking about. You can watch fights and you can understand on a surface level what's happening you know the moves you know what the guys are doing or you know what submission that was or what kick that is or but that's a good position or a bad position but you don't actually know what's going on you know you don't and i mean i got there's hundreds of sons in every fighter's dms on instagram and twitter hundreds but it's really really disappointing <laughs> like when it's a sean that you actually know or are related to like fuck come on man like can't you just be normal no so we had a, a a question come in from the audience. Where did the nickname come from? Uh, bulldozer. Yes. I mean, who, who, who asked this question? I think I can answer it, but go ahead. The guy's a fucking bulldozer. I suppose. I suppose. Uh, it actually came in a really stupid way. Uh, former former foe of yours, Mitch Clark. Um, when I was new, called me, uh, he kept, he's like, man, we got to think of a nickname for you. I only had like three or four fights. I think three fights at the time. And he just kept being like rattling shit off that rhymed with my, one of my like first or last name. And then at some point he decided to call me the dildozer. I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake. I mean, I'm three fights in. I'm a kid. I can't say shit. So now Mitch is calling me the dildozer. And like, oh my God. and then I, and then I, I want just for no reason other than it sort of rhymed and it was funny and and rude or whatever and then i i want to fight um by decision and i i did just kind of take the guy down and run over him and a guy I was with like bro you just bulldoze that guy you should just call yourself the bulldozer and i'm like oh yeah okay i'll go with bulldozer and it's also an ode to mitch's bullshit nickname so <laughs> well thank god that that other nickname didn't catch on because <laughs> You must. <laughs> you must have just been like every time he said it, just looking around. Please, no one else, no catch on to this. Please, you don't want to get. That's one thing you don't want to get known, known by. Please shut up, man. You can't. Yeah. So, I just usually default and say, "Well, because it rhymes, because it's a lot easier than telling that story." And you know, I can't go and tell that one on an official UFC uh, interview or something. But yeah, I figure I can tell that story here. This is the place. This is the place to do it. And your freaking, your freaking truck, your bulldozer in there. I mean, it just fits. It's, I, you know what I mean. It's, the yeah, bulldozer. kind of. I mean, I move a lot. Like I, I move a lot. I'm kind of mobile. Like I don't really think I fight like a bulldozer these days, truthfully. But yeah, sometimes yeah, it yeah. works. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. You do hit like you do hit like a bulldozer, though, my man. I'm, uh, yeah. I'm really glad you came on. I'm so. Happy I saw that tweet because it was one of the most amazing things the internet's brought in a while. Third cousin Sean, God bless him and good riddance to him at the same time. He's, uh, I, I'm still going to try to get him on this show somehow. We got to get him on. We got to, we could break down some of my fights. I, I would love to hear yeah, the, yeah, uh, dude, he's, I, he'd have lots of advice for it, but he's not going to because. As you can see from the message, like, uh, what he said was, I don't 
think I'd like to be on his podcast. I really have nothing to gain from it, but only to probably look like an idiot was how he started this reply. Uh, I don't need internet clout, uh, et cetera. I mean, like, but, but he shared it on Facebook, so he definitely thought it was cool. I think it's just one of those things where if you boil it down, someone who's really done nothing in their life has advice for people that have because they're too scared to even go on a podcast, even though it would be the coolest thing he's probably done in years. He, at the core of his being, is a coward and likes to think in his head that, you know, if he chose to do what me or you do, he, he could have. He just did. He just did. But he knows what we should do, though, because he's watched more UFC fights than anyone else. And, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I can't see Sean coming on your podcast, man, but keep at him. I could be wrong. <laughs> we tried. We tried. Uh Tanner, it was great having you on, man. I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to your next fight. Whatever it is, we'll be looking out. Uh, hopefully something gets announced soon. And, uh, yeah, it's it's been fun. Yeah, thanks a lot for having me, guys. Glad we got the uh, technical issues here sorted out. All Absolutely. Good. Always. Tanner Bozer, ladies and gentlemen, at Bulldozer Bozer. Bozer, yes, sir. Incredible. Another incredible story from the internet. Third cousin Sean. I think that's one that's gonna stick around for a while. The thir- everyone, everyone that gives uh, unwarranted advice is now gonna be the, the third cousin. Third cousin Sean. Everyone's. I think everyone's got one. Everyone's got a third cousin Sean in their life. Um, and, and of course, third cousin Sean's are always welcome at the Call Me Out show. I'm sure he's listening to this, and I I gotta be honest with you, I I'm really looking for some advice on my uh, my losses. I can always I I can take criticism. I can take it, and uh, I'm looking forward to it actually. To be honest with you, from third cousin Sean, is is VB in the yeah. house? Oh, we got we got Ben. Let's let's get Ben in here. All Ben's right, Ben. Give us some advice, and I want to talk to a fellow New Yorker about uh, about our situation with uh, with the governor. All right, Ben is invited. VB, stand by. I'll tell you when Ben is visible, and you can bring him on at will. We got the uh, why didn't you duck? Jeff G is all right. I will invite VB too, but VB, keep your mic muted until we bring you on. All right, Ben's here. Would you like me to bring him on, or would you like to bring him? Yeah, bring bring Ben. What's up? He's wearing a shirt and he's got earbuds on. Can you guys see me? We see you, brother. Oh yeah. Yo. Al, what's You're up, in. baby? Aaron, what's up, what? my man? What's up, my man? <laughs> Let's hey, go. Hey, Al, listen, before we get into it, fuck Cuomo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see hey, listen, you. bro. I got, I got what he I deserves, you know? You. And I thank you. He did, right? I mean, yeah. hold on. Where's this video? Is it not playing? We got, we got a couple of videos. You know what? I may have to yeah. re-download it. So it should have played. I heard it. Were you playing? I appreciate you. We and got I Cuomo. You. I mean, I got to be honest with you. I almost, he almost got me with his little farewell, farewell speech. He almost made me, uh, basically the beginning, he was saying, this is the way I've been my whole life. I, in my mind, I've never crossed the line with anybody. Uh... Essentially, he said that, you know, boundaries, the line has changed from when he first started till now. Basically, he said he was kind of like, I'm, you know, I'm just a creepy old guy. I'm just yeah, like the creepy old Are guy. Are you ashamed and now, he's Italian now? <laughs> oh, man. So did he say that? I miss. I saw the. I saw that he said he was Italian. Did he say that? I missed that. That wasn't. No, no. I'm asking interview. you. Are you? Are you ashamed? Are you ashamed that he's Italian? Uh, yeah, I'm kind of ashamed with the guy. Yeah, I'm ashamed. I'm more in New York. I'm kind of more ashamed to uh, the, the New York thing. 
Yeah, I'm not you know? surprised, honestly, though. If I was, a, I mean, look at that guy. If you were a woman, would you want to bang him? He's fucking ugly, you know? Uh, I mean, it, it's, it's more like the fact that, like, he's got no self-awareness. He's just like... Yeah, man. You know what I mean? He's. I don't know who's worse, him or de Blasio, though. They're both. They're oh, both. that guy's, he's, he's just, yeah, he's a different story. But Cuomo, he, he almost had me when he started out. He basically said, listen, I'm just like a creepy old guy. And I, this is how I do it. I kiss, I hug, but I can't do that anymore, so I'm out. Is and that what he said? Work. That was like his farewell speech? Uh, like, well, the beginning of it. Essentially, he wasn't saying that. He was saying it. I wish I could pull up the video, but he said, he said, I mean, he was kind of going along those lines. He, he brought up the, uh, the one, the least, um, I guess the least credible of all the women that came forward, maybe a girl that out of everybody, it was like the most questionable. The rest of them were bad. He grabbed the girl's, he grabbed the girl's boob. He did this, he did that. He was, but this one, the one example that he gave was pro he was like, I wish we could pull up, but he said, uh, he said that, uh, you know, he used that as the example. Oh, I hugged her. Oh, I made a joke that, um, I made a joke that she was getting married, and I, I made a joke about uh, losing your sex drive when you get married. Something that, like a, an old creepy guy would say. That's Some weird, old guys, they get so away with weird. it. Kind of God like, damn it. Yeah, what but, that, but that was the least one. The rest of them were worse. But then the part that really got me was when he started talking about how awesome – he was kind of patting himself on the back about the quarantine, about the whole pandemic, and he was he, – he made it about – how great New York is now, and it's like, dude, get the hell it's out of here. It's not great at all. I'm in the city it's... every day. Every block I go on, I see a fucking bum jerking off. I see shit on the floor. There's piss everywhere. The city's a goddamn mess, bro. I'm in there every day, dude. I mean, I work in the city. I see what's going on. Listen, man, I understand the situations everywhere. There's homeless people everywhere. But I was born and raised in this city. I never seen it this bad, especially this, the city like Manhattan. Queens is nice. Brooklyn is nice. If you go out of the city, it's better. But strictly New York City, like Manhattan, where the city is, it's really bad out there, man. It's 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 super bad. Like it's just, it's disgusting. The city's not what it used to be. The golden age, the golden era is gone. No, it's. I mean, and people are people are, are flocking to Florida, North Carolina, yeah. uh, Arizona. People Everybody are left. people are. I mean, listen uh, to now. Look, I mean, I work in a building, right? I'm a doorman in a building. It's a uh, it's a 750 unit building, right? 750 units, there's two towers. The moment corona hit, everybody went back home. There was 500 empty apartments. 200 uh, units were all occupied. Everybody else left. Everybody went home back to Wisconsin, Alabama, wherever the fuck they were from. But nobody was staying here. It was, it, it was a ghost town, man. Everybody left. And it's yeah, not... It's it's not uh, I don't know if it's going to ever go back to normal. God knows how long it's going to take, so who knows. I think it's going to take a really long time because people are... I mean... Everyone's gone. Everyone's left. They're they're keeping now. He's he's bringing the the, the vaccine. I mean now he's he's gone. So we'll see what happens uh, with when, when things change over in uh, a week and a half. But um, yeah, every, the restaurants were crushed. I mean, you get crushed. Yeah, it, restaurants are bad, man. Restaurants. Closing the restaurants. A, my dad's a waiter at uh, at Wolfgang Steakhouse in the city. And he was fucking, he wasn't working for like a year, so he went back home to Montenegro where we're from, so he, there was no reason for him to stay here. <clears throat> yeah, that was it. There was, you know, people that, their livelihoods were taken away. Um, and I, I don't know, was was it worth it? The, were, the, were the COVID deaths, are we getting real, I don't even know if we're getting real numbers. They said that, uh, you know, the numbers were messed with and then. There, there was the whole thing with him and the, uh, the you know, the, the the retirement homes and yeah. and uh, that whole thing. And the guy wrote a book. Between how will you have time to write a book when all this is going on? <laughs> I can't you're writing a book, a book about how good you're doing. Right I mean, what a narcissistic yeah. guy. That's crazy, but right? he is. Uh, He's and he's that's gone. That's city for you, Al. There's a lot. It's full of narcissistic, self-centered people that just give a shit about themselves and nobody else. Yeah, you know? I mean, I don't know about that. I I think that the New York City I know is is a a lot of people with a lot of soul, a lot of heart. The restaurants, the the people that 
you meet in New York City are some of the most stand-up people. I mean, there's no the one thing I go to uh, I go to Emilio Bellato's and uh, and it's right right on uh, East Houston Street. It's old school, old school restaurant. Grew up with Emilio, um, and one thing he'll tell you is everyone is real in New York. You go to L.A., you go to Miami. You know, you don't. Everyone's kind of like yeah, got their yeah, their reason, sure. what they're doing. You know what I mean? There's sure. is is so much fakeness, but in New York City, it's a different. It's a, it's just different. You know, yeah. there's there's it's as real as it gets, and you know to pe- put people through that. What what Cuomo put everyone through, closing this these restaurants that have so much. Uh, history and so much heart and soul and he's still getting paid yeah right how does that make sense he's still getting paid you're shutting all these businesses down but you're still getting paid how much more of a schmuck can you be bro <laughs> what the fuck oh my god it's, in, it's incredible it's, funny, it's incredible but uh Alex, you know what i want us to ask you real quick go for it how what tanner Boser was talking about his third cousin sean right <laughs> Did you ever have a third cousin, Sean? Has anybody ever told you some bullshit like that and try to give you advice? Like, seriously, a person that was a novice, that had nothing to do with it, that never fought, has no idea what they're talking about, try to tell you what to do? Uh, Colton, Colt from last week. Colton. He gave me some, uh, it was the guy, the guy Colt last week. He had, the, he yeah. had the hat on, you could only see his eyes. I don't know if you, I don't know if you... Maybe. I don't think I seen him now. What was he saying? Yeah. Uh. Well, he gave he gave me a whole bunch of shit last week, and then uh, and then on Instagram he was saying, "I can't believe you lost to Cerrone. You're such a you're such an idiot. Why'd you play the kicking game? You could have boxed him up." And I feel like you were trying to box him up, though, Al. You know what? He was kind of. He was a little. He was. Definitely on the right track. The game plan was to box, and I don't know why. I started throwing kicks, and Cerrone's a kicker. Probably not the best move, yeah. but listen, freaking cult. If you think Ray Longo and Matt Serra didn't t- give me the same talk when I got it, I'm listening to them. I'm not listening to you, brother. Okay, I had a lot of people. <laughs> I had a lot of people tell me, uh, you know, what things that I can work on that I respect. People that have that you know have my best interest in heart. Him telling me that what I did right and what I or not. He just told me what I did wrong. And then the same thing with this third cousin Sean. It's like uh, it's like, it's like an me ego telling the pilot how to fucking how to fly uh, how to fly a plane. Yeah, it would be an ego <laughs> thing. You know what I mean? He's he's uh, there's something that he gets out of it for himself. He, he inserts himself in the situation. Yo, they don't, um, they don't, you know, want to know why out? Because they've never been in a fight and they don't understand what it's like. I really think yeah. that's what it is, man. They really don't get what it's like. They don't understand. They don't get it. And they don't get how hard it is. And what fucking nah. level you're fighting at, man. I'll never forget the fight I became a fan of, like when I first started watching UFC, was when you fought Hori Mazadol. The fucking, you booing me? <laughs> that's when I became a fan. <laughs> that's how I, was like, I was like, yo, this guy's a fucking gangster, man. And then I remember you knocked out. I watched all your past fights, or before I watched your previous fights before that. And I think you knocked out Rodrigo Dam, fucking Joe Lozon. That was a big one. And then, um, yeah, man, you were just on a tear for a while. But shit happened. You are you are repairing me because CJ came on and just absolutely annihilated me. I was he he broke me down. This freaking guy. I don't know if you were listening in the beginning. This guy CJ. He was Ooh. he was talking a whole bunch of crap, but uh, we figured out the guy wasn't too intelligent. No. Um, probably not. Probably not the uh, the smart. Probably one of the the uh, dumbest people we've had on the show. It was <laughs> more of a mistake to have him on. Looking back, he couldn't even he couldn't figure out how to get on with the with the video, and so we called him in. Yeah, it's and uh, would have liked to have seen it seen the guy's face while he was while he was talking, but uh, yeah. You get these guys; they uh, they just want to input something, and it's not what do you good. Think it is though. Do you think it's for, uh, like I don't understand? Do you think it's insecurity or from a place where it's like 
like Tanner said, they never accomplished something. So it's like that's I don't I don't know. They probably get a fulfillment out of that or something. I don't know, bro. It's weird. Yeah, it's definitely. We we should have a a psychologist on to break down some of these guys. Yeah, bring on fucking Jordan Peterson. He'll help, you, he'll help these dudes out. We'll bring we'll bring we'll bring him in and get get a a, a free therapy session on here for like third cousin Sean. That guy, and, that guy's so weird too, bro. Talk shit. He comes on here, kisses. Oh, that ass. guy. It's like what the hell? I think we got I think we got rid of him. I stopped responding to his. Yeah, uh, that guy's a weirdo, bro. His Instagram. Uh, he was messaging my mom Yo, Al, on you know Instagram. what's funny though? All this stuff they say on Twitter. How <laughs> much would you? Honestly, I guarantee you, I'll put all the money in my bank account. Not one of them will say shit to your face or whoever's face, any 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 MMA fighter's face. They will never say one thing. They will never say whatever they say on Twitter in, in front of them. No, absolutely not. Are the cops coming for you? Are those are those yeah, cops? The, the cops? Yeah, they actually are coming for me. <laughs> Rest in oh, peace, God. style bender, happy trails. Yeah. I don't know if he's making it. Is VB here? I want to. I want to talk to. I let's bring him. VB in. Yeah, VB, VB buddy, is, I you, so go ahead and come on VB in. VB is here. We're gonna. We're gonna get VB. Well, while we're um, waiting for VB, you know what? Uh, Joe Laws, with the, the Lozon fight in between rounds. You know his corner said. Uh, you know I got some advice for you, and Lozon immediately he replied, "I'm all ears." No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I get it. I played that, that, that around on the uh, real estate account. Yeah, so. That was fucking funny. That was a good one, Aaron. You got jokes, bro. Every once He's in a while. BB, I'm going to invite He's you. Got yeah. Oh, you got a fan. Uh, Macarion 1600 on YouTube says, this guy is a great guest, brother. Oh, hell yeah. Great. I'll fucking yeah. come on every week. You guys are awesome, bro. I love this show. <laughs> We got a huge YouTube influx of comments, and I'm not sure where they came from. So uh, thanks to whoever, uh, if that happened organically, that's awesome too. So, uh, I appreciate all the YouTube love. We're, yo, we're Al, I got, I got a question now. Shoot. You still trashing hotels, bro? I kind of grew up, I think. Yeah, I love seeing I kind of grew up, man. I can we're, tell, I can tell. You're more you know, wiser now, right? You're not, you're uh, not, I remember when Joe Rogan said it. He said, I'll never forget. I think you guys remember this on his podcast. He said it. If I could find it on YouTube, I swear to God, I'll clip it. But he said, uh, he said, you got, he said, like, he's like, Ally quits is like his eyes. When you look inside his eyes, sometimes you can tell it. You like wonder if anybody's home or some shit like that. <laughs> I so the God, thing, so Joe Rogan thinks, uh, now, I, I got to be honest with you. I'm not the most stable person at, at <laughs> times. But. Every time yeah, I've seen Joe Rogan, I think maybe like three – the three times where I've actually had like a conversation, two of them, I was blackout drunk. <laughs> and, and if he was looking in my eyes, the lights were on, but nobody was home. And it's very, <laughs> it's very, it's very unfortunate for me oh, because he, I don't think he realized I – I do a pretty good job of uh, – I do a pretty good job of, of acting normal, but uh, he definitely, definitely thinks that uh, I'm I'm a different person than I am uh, normally. I think we have the one and only calling in from parts unknown. We don't know where this guy is from. We don't know much about him, but we do know who, who he is, is VB MMA. Hey guys, VB, how are we? Yo, what's up, VB? What's up? How you doing? Doing well. How, how about you? Hey, listen, Did you find Stalin? I want to see your cute. I want to see your cute face, bro. Why don't you get on webcam? I don't understand what's going on. Can't. Uh, VB, he uh, can't. No. No, I was gonna say he's international, right? He's the man of mystery. Yeah, he true. is the international man. You no, know, actually, this makes him more fucking cool. Right? <laughs> The international <laughs> man, there you go, buddy. Mystery VB <laughs> MMA VB. I, I don't know, man. I don't know about those picks last week. I would agree. I sucked last week. Yeah. Wow, man. Did you learn a valuable lesson, though? Um, uh, kind of, but kind of, you know, it was. Wild fight, you know. 
if you if you mean TS uh, he he was doing well and it's MMA. So not really. He almost had it, you know. He went real hard for that choke. He was going really hard and I think he he almost had that thing. Yeah. Lucas said it was eighty percent in. He, hey, he fellas, I'm gonna get off, so. man. You guys have a good night, all right? Oh man, hey, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having the earbuds. Well, I see on. my man. Yo, see you, bro. Al, Aaron, Phoebe, have a good day, bro. New York. Hey, see ya. What, uh, VB, where were we? Yeah, so, Luke and, um, Kiesa, right? Your friend. Yeah. It was yeah, a tough Kiesa one, Yeah, Kiesa almost had it. I was, I was really disappointed he lost. You know, he lost. I was rooting yeah. for him real, really bad, but, yeah. Happens in MMA. You know that better than anyone, right? Nah, it's, yeah, I mean, he's on, he was on a hot streak. <laughs> Yeah. Michael Chiesa undefeated at 170, cool. and I mean at that at that weight class, at that level, any I mean anything can happen. I think I think that's a fight he can win most of the time. Yeah, I really do. I think you saw it right there, you know, in the in, in glimpses, but he got put in a bad position. Um, he got the takedown fairly easily. I thought he timed it perfectly. True. Sure. Yeah, you know, if he had different game plan, maybe not to finish him. Maybe if he tried to win decision, you know, maybe he would for sure win. But you know, maybe he wanted to finish it, you know, for yeah, it's kind of implications it, or something. So maybe yeah, he, he just went. He, uh, yeah. yeah, he just went for it. He went for he went for yeah. the finish. I think if he would have kept position and and taken the back and maybe held yeah. the back. You're right. You're right. I think you know that's a different story. But you know, you got, you know the he, takedown was super easy. You know, I was actually surprised how easy he got it. You know, I mean, wow, it was great takedown, good timing and everything. But then he went for a choke. Then he got, you know, reversed. Then Luca went for a choke, and you know, it's MMA. So, but my parlay cashed. I I gave you many field and Fizier, which hit. Oh, that so, was a good. And what a fight with Fizier. I'm going back, my castle. One last thing. He almost had that choke, and he would have. I mean, I think he would have looked like a, a superstar, and for title implications, yep. it would have been incredible. That things, you know, inch this way, inch that way, would have been a little different. Um, but that Fiziev fight with uh, with Bobby, Bobby Green. Green. Oh yeah, that was insane. Oh, horror fight, right? Um, yeah, I, I thought thirty twenty seven was crazy, even though I had Fiziev. I thought he won, but not. 30-27, you know. Third round was Bobby's, right? I mean, that's judges there, you know. But I th I thought Fizio won first two, and third was Bobby's, for sure. I think, uh, yeah, um, the Houston, right? I was in Houston. So those judges, they seem to be, uh, they seem to be a little all over the place. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know how they gave third round to Fizio. It was very controversial. Everyone was talking about it, you know? Yeah. I, I was even thinking maybe it was 10-8 for Bobby. And when I heard 30-27, I was like, oh, I lost, you know, Fizio bet because 30-27 is not right, you know? But then I got 29-28 twice and I won. But yeah, 30-27 is just crazy. That's you what had, judges uh... do. Sometimes. So you had Fiziev winning. Um, and, yeah, Manifield winning. He beat Ed Herman. Those two parlayed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Ed Herman's leg, his shin. Ugh. Yeah, that was brutal. <laughs> yeah, that was bad. But great fights overall. Lewis, poor guy. Yeah. In his hometown and, yeah. He 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 basically threw four punches, five. You know, he it was too big for him. I I think you know. Yeah, it was. The moment uh, and everything. It was definitely not his night. I think that's a guy that just has his number. I mean, Sirogan looks like he could do that. He could have done that the whole twenty-five minutes. He looks like he could have done that the whole night. He was just so sound. He was in landing landing his shots, and then. Almost to the point where he was running away, but I wouldn't count it as running because he was getting in there and landing his shots. He was so efficient 
at getting the shots off he needed to, getting out of the way. Derek Lewis gets a little tired. He's, he puts more pressure on. It's like uh, the perfect. That was like the perfect. What a what a. Uh, a uh, uh, for me, it was that put me on that put me over on Cyril Gan. I was like, wow, this yeah. is now. I want to see him fight for the title. Now and I think he's small favorite against Francis. That's crazy, you know. That's wow, that's incredible. Yeah, so. that's crazy. I mean, but, hey, who what knows? did you think about the Fiziev fight with with Bobby Green? I thought it was awesome, but I thought Fiziev got really tired in the third, and he lost yeah. the third. That's where I thought, you know. Yeah, he held. He held on. He definitely held on, but I think he got hurt a yeah. couple times in that third round. What a turnaround, Bobby Green. Um, I feel like. He's even though he lost this fight, I feel like being able to push like that in the in the third round shows yeah. that he's definitely. I I just I think that um, you know the hands down the whole time he could be like a little more serious. If, I think if he had like a little bit more of a serious attitude, he there's no reason that that guy shouldn't be beating everybody. He's just. Uh, he he beats some good people, but that's his style, also, you know. So yeah. yeah and then did you see? Like he's playing some gangster for like, he's just he said it's 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 like game plan, you know. He's trying to yeah get people, you know. I don't know attack him or something, and then he counters them. That's and it, that's it, what it he looks said. Like, yeah, it looks like it works. It's just something. He's just a little something's like a little. He needs like a little something more, just a little something more, and I think he could be one of the, one of the best, if not the best. He's got, I think he's got, he's got, and he showed in that fight, digging deep and putting it on Fiziev in the third round. Did yeah. you see who Fiziev called out in the post-fight yeah. interview? Yeah, you the saw that small guy, Hasbula. Yeah, I know. No, not a fan of that guy, to be honest. You know, not for me. Yeah. What a I'm fantastic born. fight. Hasbullah! Hasbullah! <laughs> you think I will work what I do all my life in the UFC? If you want to find a fight, you fight with me, bro. Yeah. Hasbullah is... I mean... Yeah. I mean, if you're going to call out Hasbullah, be like, listen, dude, you want to be my friend or something? I was a little... Uh, a little cringeworthy. There was... There was yeah. a, a video of uh, Chael Sonnen, and and he was he was he was calling uh, Fizzy of a nerd. He goes, he's a nerd. What is he doing calling out Hasbullah? It was kind of cringy. I agree. You know, Hasbullah. To be honest, I, I can't have fun with him. You know, for me, it's not funny. I don't know why, but it's not. You know, <laughs> that guy is. Yeah. I think he entertains me. The guy. I, I mean. It's so crazy how like well, it's uh that guy has taken over the internet and he's on yeah. even people that don't know uh they're not into MMA know this guy Hasbula and they're like who's this little and now you find out now you find out that he's a a 19 year old guy or something yeah yeah Always i guess like this, but... yeah what the okay. hell is he doing calling calling out Hasbula like, he on, should have dude, called you... out. He should have called out some top ten, you know, someone from top ten. But uh, Chel Sonnen said Makachev. No, Makachev would take him down. And, you know, no. You think I don't so? think so. No, I Dan Hooker maybe. Ooh, that's a good fight. Who do you say? Yeah, Dan Hooker. Oh. Uh, I can't stand how Chel Sonnen says Makolchev. <laughs> Have you guys noticed that? He calls him Makolchev. Yeah. And <laughs> Chel is funny. Yeah. I like Chel. He's got to know the guy's name is Makachev, right? Not Makolchev. Actually, you're wrong too. It's Makachev. Right? Yeah, well, I'm close. I mean, Makachev. Yeah. There's no L. Makachev. <laughs> it would be kind of like how an American would say it, Makachev. They would do uh, sure. <sighs> <Old Chev. laughs> so, yeah, so but... now I'll say it, now I'll say it that way, but there's no Machal. There's no L in it. Yeah, for chill, I guess it is. It grinds my it grinds my gears. Islam versus 
Gregor Gillespie. What a great fight that would be. Ooh. Yeah. I'm actually a big fan of Gregor Gillespie. You know, I'm a huge fan. Not I mean, I don't have a poster of him or something, but, you know, I I like the guy. He has a lot of heart. Win or lose, I don't care. He, or he got hectic by Kevin Lee, you know. But I thought, I think he wins that fight like seven, eight out of ten times, in my opinion. I agree. I think uh, I think he definitely wins that fight majority of the time. I think if he, he he looked like he was content standing on his feet, but yeah, um, I think Kevin Lee dodged a bullet on that one. That yeah, could have I been think... a bad night for Kevin Lee. Kevin Lee's got a new opponent too. I, who is it? I can't remember now. Daniel Rodriguez. Yeah. What do we Good think about fight. that? I think. Uh... I think that fight is going to be probably Kevin Lee wins it, you know, more likely than not, but we'll see. Yeah, I think, what do you think, Kevin Lee's just wrestle, big wrestling match? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Um, we have no UFC this week, but we have PFL and Bellator. Bellator. Yeah, and Bellator has great main event. From, I mean, I'm a nerd and I'm a big fan of Gegard Mousasi. Is there <laughs> any underdog on either car? Because all these are split wide open. Any underdog on either of these cards that you're picking? Oh, oh shit. You know, in uh, the next week, there's one guy. Um, what, what's what's this it? clock? There's a clock going right now. What is this clock? BB, quick. Who is it? Who is it? Quick. Okay. It's your Long Island native, I think. You know, it's Chris Wade. Chris Wade. Chris Wade's yep. a beast. Who else? Who else do we got? VB, quick. There's uh, seven seconds. Okay. Um, damn it. Okay. Olivier Ober Mercier inside the distance. So by submission or knockout. Olivier Ober Mercier inside the distance. VB MMA. <laughs> uh, a, I got it. it was, he got it. He got it in. It was a pleasure. Oh, I, thank you very much, VB. Thanks. That was, man, that clock just came out of nowhere. What the heck? I don't even know what the heck that was about. Crazy. VB MMA with the picks. He's going uh, Oliver Aubert Mercier, the Canadian gangster, right? The Canadian? Canadian gangster. gangster. What a great nickname. Incredible. Incredible nickname. If you're going to be Canadian, you might as well be a gangster. Boom. And he went with Chris Wade, the Long Island legend himself. I like it. The legend of Chris Wade. I, yeah, I like it. Aaron, my man, I hear that you have a birthday party to attend to. That's right, baby. I got about a two hour drive. My wife and kids are elsewhere, but I'm here for the Call Me Out podcast, and I had to work. But, you know, happy uh, birthday to Mrs. Weinbaum. Happy birthday, Mrs. Weinbaum. Where's the party at? I'm so, so I'm so ups- I'm so upset. I didn't get an invite. Dude, Absolutely. you want to go down to the Missouri State Fair and uh, hang out with us and drink beer by a camper tonight? You are more than welcome. Dude, I got to be honest with you. That sounds like a party. It is going to be a party for sure. The Missouri State Fair. Yeah, I see. Just like uh, what are they? The the Ferris wheels. Oh yeah, we got the Ferris wheels. We got just a gigantic oh. Ferris wheel. Yeah, there's one of those. And uh, I'll tell you what. Listen, it's camping, but there's lots of air conditioning. My camper's very nice, and uh, you know it's a good time. And you know we just basically we'll we'll sit around. We'll go to the fair for a little bit. We'll sit around in bag chairs and drink some beer and and uh, shoot the shit. You know, incredible. But wait, I gotta show you one more thing. Oh, I gotta show you. You look at this. Oh, yeah. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. The Aya Quinta 316 I just sold you your home. I just sold your home. Yes. Aya Quinta, call me Al show t-shirts at teespring.com forward slash forward slash call me Al. Get yours today. We appreciate everybody coming on the show. Aaron, always a pleasure in the words 
of Cuomo. I see you, and I thank you. Yes, beautiful Until next time. Let's hear the anthem. Remember, don't take asking price. We'll see you all next week. So if you be my bodyguard. Thanks for listening to Call Me Out with Ally Acquinto. Remember to subscribe to the podcast wherever you like to listen. I can call you Betty. And Betty, you can call me. You can call me out. Call me out.